Now in C language, we have the ability to be able to declare a variable and assign it a value all in one statement. Can we do that like so? Int a, we get the arrow out of the way. Int a, and then I can assign it the value of 25 and a semicolon. That would be a legitimate statement within C language. Can I do that within MATLAB? Well, something similar to that. I can declare a sims variable, s y m s space, and the variable's name is a. I hit enter. And now I look over here. On the left-hand side, I see the variable a and a little sign right next to it. Oh my goodness, what is that? I go over here to virtual looking glass, and you'll see there's an at sign right there. That means it's a sims variable. A sims variable. If I move over to the right, you'll see it's a sim object. Huh. Huh. It's a sim object. Huh. What else can I learn about this, this thing? Well, how about assign it a value at the same time that I declare it? Let's say, can I do this? Sim b and assign it the value of one fourth. No, I can't. But wait a minute, I didn't get an error. You didn't get the right answer either. Look what happened. First off, I keyed in sim, not sims, and the variable I get was something got was something called answer, and contained in it is something called b. And it's not what I wanted at all. All right, let's do this the right way, sort of. I key in sims, and then b, and I'm going to key in equals one fourth. For certain, this should do it, right? No, I'm going to get an error. There I go. It doesn't like that at all. So, hmm, what is another way that I can make a variable? Well, I could say b equals sim one fourth and assign it the value. Let's see if that worked. Yes, I create the variable called b. I assign it the value one fourth. And if you look up here, you'll see b and the at sign in that icon. So this is a sim object. Look over here, it is a sim object. Huh. Wow. All right, is there another way to make one of these variables? Yes, there is. It's a little bit long-winded, but it works. I could say c equals sim, and then single quotes, c. Oops, I would have to actually key in the equal sign, c equal sign, sim, single quotes, c, close parens. <laughs> oh, my typing is really good today. Close parens. And there we go. Now I have a variable called c. And it's of type sim. Are you for sure? There it is. That's on. In the icon, C. Look over to the right. It's a sim object. Wow. All right. Let's move that over a tad. All right. Hmm. Let's see. What else can I learn about this system? Well, I have a, a variable called C. I want to assign it the value of. Well, C is going to be equal to. Well, take the expression I'm going to key and make it sure that it's it's in sim. So sim, and then open parens, one-fourth plus. Uh, let's make it tough, seven-eighths. Now, what should the system do now? The system should find the common denominator. One-fourth is equal to two-eighths. Add that to seven-eighths, and I should get nine-eighths. Let's see if it does that. Oh, I get nine-eighths. This system is good. Now, the next thing I want to do, I want to... Uh, Multiply c by 1 over 9. c is equal to what? 9 eighths. If I multiply by 1 over 9, c will be equal to, uh, the 9s cancel out, 1 eighth. Well, let's see what happens. c times 1 over 9. And I get 1 eighth. Hmm. So now if I take c and I raise it to the second power. Oh, I can't type today at all. Try it again. There we go. If I raise it to the second power, what am I going to get? Will I get 1 squared over 8 squared, giving me 1 over 64? Or will I get 81 over 64? What will I get? Let's find out. 81 over 64. Oh my goodness, what happened? Where did I go wrong? I went wrong up here. We said take 1 fourth, add it to 7 eighths, that gives us 9 eighths. Then I said, take C, multiply it times 1 ninth. But I did not reassign this answer back. And so it was put into the variable called a and s, and the variable a and s has one eighth in it. I then took c, which still has nine eighths in it, squared it, and I got 81 over 64. Oh, so what I should have done before was I should have said c equals c times one over nine. Now c has one eighth in it. If I say c to the power of 2. I should get 1 squared over 8 squared, which is 1 over 64. And that's what I now get. What do you know? 
So what do you take away from this? You take away from this the fact that you have to be very careful and reassign your values back to the original variable if you're going to be doing further any further mathematical operations uh, involving that variable, or you're going to be in some serious trouble. Huh. That's about all I have to say for you, to you today. Uh, this is George Bull. I thank you for listening and viewing. And I'm wishing you a, a fond farewell. Bye-bye now.